And what is up, everybody? Welcome live to AllertonAv.com for the block party. I'm your host, Chad, and this week I'm joined by Tristan, Amy, and Jason has made it. Go ahead, go ahead, Amy, show off Jason to everybody so they can see it. Is that the bodacious Jason? <laughs> The little bodacious Jay is in the house. I'm gonna buck you up, Doesn't she have a song? Doesn't Jason have a song? If you guys can't see it, if you're only listening to the audio format, uh, Amy has Jason brought. Is Jason is chicken for this episode, as always. Adorable little chicken. It's always off the rails when Jason's when Jason turns chicken. It's always off the rails. So, yeah, Jason will join us as chicken. Um, and it'll be a wonderful episode because of that. You know, thanks for thanks for that, Amy, for bringing Jason in here when he couldn't make it. He was sleeping, and I feel so bad that I woke him up. Yeah, well, he'll get sleeping. over it. Just throw him over your shoulder; it'll be fine. I'm gonna give Jason some cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, there's a huge there's a huge sale going on right now. If you guys, I just want to open up with this real quick, dude. Big sale going on at uh, if you guys. Like video games for the holidays, probably the best sale you can get, dude. Buy two, get one free at Target right now. And uh, Amy just get, brought a revelation into the house. And it has, it's it not a chicken. It is unfortunately not a chicken, but it is Titanfall 2 into the house, yeah. dude. I just bought this Titanfall 2. Dude, legit. I see, we were just on a red box and then just kind of play, like, you know, red box <laughs> copies, but. What is going on over there? Jason's dancing. I can't even concentrate right now. I'm trying to run a show here. I'm trying to run a show. I'm trying to talk about it. Titanfall 2 came out on Friday. Um, we had a chance to check it out. Tristan, I don't. I think we were talking about you haven't had a chance to dive into it yet, but you have a copy yet. waiting for you. Yep, I do. To get your hands on. And uh, so far, we talked about it a little bit, but, um, dude, one of the big things coming out of the weekend, and uh, we don't have the U.S. sales yet, but the U.K. sales are deeming it as a third of what Titanfall originally did in sales um, for its opening weekend, which is not a good estimate. But um, some cool things have been said by EA that they will continue to support them. They'll continue to work on it with the developers and see what happens. It's a franchise that they like and they want to build on. So we got good things, you know, in the works, hopefully from those guys, man, that they're like willing to, you know, continue to push this thing even though it isn't, isn't rocking off we went into the multiplayer server um amy go ahead what do you got to say i just want to do the breakdown you had mentioned the um the sale on the games and we broke it down mathematically for people like not that you can't do it but just in case you didn't think of it if you have the best buy um like the gamer club thing at best buy you'd normally get a brand new game for 47 dollars ish with tax the target buy two get one free um, your games go di like divided it all up, etc., to about forty dollars a game. So you're only saving about seven to eight bucks a game, but spread over three games, that's around like twenty eight bucks worth of savings. So it is worth it, considering if you go to GameStop, generally new games bought used are like fifty dollars. So um, just tying it back into what Chad had mentioned uh, about it's like a fairly good deal. It is a really good idea if there are any games that you can currently afford to get. Um, we kind of stacked a couple of them up for uh, holiday presents for later, and then we got, like Chad said, Titanfall 2, and we'll segue back into Titanfall 2. Continue. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying. You just... You're talking about how we finally played um, uh, on the servers, like, multiplayer. Hmm. That was the experience. It was a lot of fun. I yeah. loved it. It was a great game. It's definitely the first Titanfall game, but, like re-energized. I was really excited with it. There's the challenges still. The weapons can get upgraded and unlocked and you can do like extra stuff to them. You have like um, the same maps essentially. So your uh, hard point that you love to play, they have hard point but it's like amped now. So not is yeah, it not I was playing that in the beta. Yeah. Yeah. It was like really cool. At first I was like this is d oh it like gets you to go back to your base and recharge mm -hmm. it and like even if, like, sometimes you're just having an off game, too. Like, I have those, and you're just like, God damn it, I can't do a goddamn thing. Not from the scores that I saw you putting up. You don't have, you don't even know what an off game is. Those chickens just broke loose. That's fine. The the bathroom. I'll be back. All right, so Amy was running some score. This show is just off the fucking chains. It's going down the shitter quick. <laughs> um, but Amy, Amy was just talking about is they got hard point. Uh, they got the classic uh, attritions in there, which I didn't think was going to be in there from the beta. We didn't see it. You know, it was just a uh, bounty, and it was just a... Uh, 
uh, bounty and hardpoint in there, so we weren't sure. And like in bounty mode, there's not as many grunts. There, there's like pods of gr grunts, but like they're all for for points. And then you have to kill them, you get yeah. the money, and then you drop it off at the bounty hole. Like so, we weren't thinking that they were going to be on the maps, but and they have more in. than one just of the original maps. Like a good collection of them of the original maps. Um. The originals, we haven't played in any of the originals yet, so, like, we've oh, only... I thought Amy was saying that they're, they have some of the originals. I don't know. Oh, old maps from the first one. No? I know you... they have at least one, because they brought back, uh, I forget what it was called, that they talked about before the game was released, that they're going to have it. But I was hoping that they're going to have more than just that one. Uh, they they must have one that she played in. Um, I don't mm -hmm. recall. I You know, we've only played couple hours worth of it so we might sure. not have seen all the rotation on the maps but um some of the maps are pretty forgettable like as in like you can play through it and run some areas and not really i don't know kind of get lost in it because you know some of the stages in the original titanfall 2 um for example the holographic stage where it was sure. like one side was like normal looking the other side was completely holographic you can kind of tell where you are in this, yeah. in this, these maps, man, I feel like a lot of them, like, you just can get lost easily because it all just blends together and looks the same. Mm. But, um, yeah, so far, dude, it's pretty much everything Titanfall was and uh, just powered up and, and much better. Like, dude, the, just the customization of the Titan so far. Amy's been exploring the Scorch one, which I was yeah. having a lot of problems with, but apparently she can kick ass with it. Dude, I like team killed with him. He's so awesome. <laughs> Because you can shoot out things like with triangle. We're playing it on the PS4, so you get to get on PS4. Well, we switched the PS4, like, yeah. You switched? I thought we were all doing Xbox. Well, I don't have an Xbox Gold membership, <laughs> and like I didn't want to play sixty dollars for it, and then like another sixty dollars. You know, like yeah, and I get my it. PlayStation one doesn't expire for a while. Um, but yeah, like you get these gas canister canisters, you shoot them out, and then they just like shh, spill gas, which doesn't really do too much. But any of your shots here are incendiary, or like you can do this big like thing across like the map. Like a fire whip. Ignites them. Yeah. And like I've been getting better at positioning them just far enough away from each other while it create like this giant like wall. And anyone that gets in it dies. So that's awesome. Especially at hard point because they're all like trying to like be on the point. And you launch it into the point and they just like burn. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Because like even if they're just like. Um... Just like little grunts hanging out there, and like little uh, pilots hanging out there, just standing on the spot. You can toss your canister in there and just burn that whole damn thing out. I didn't even think about that. You are a spot killer. No wonder you're getting top on all the spots, dude. Every single mode we played, she was getting like first place, and I'm like, I don't get it. Now it's making sense. You're just torching like the little little zones, dude, and just getting free kills I'm on everybody. Really, it's the Titans too. It's not just the little bitties. Yeah, dude, they... It's a lot harder to kill the Titans, because you have to do one shot reload, one shot reload, one shot reload, so it's kind of tough. I mean, his magma shield thing's pretty cool, but it doesn't, like, deflect them back. When you let go, it just melts them. So, it's... I don't know, it's... He is kind of tough to play with, the Scorch guy, but I really like him. He just looks cool. He's my friend. What's your favorite mode so far? Me? Yeah. Well, Tristan hasn't really played like it yet, yeah. I really like the campaign a lot. I think the story's clever. BT's pretty cute. I like him. He's fun. I'm halfway through the campaign. I'm almost done with it, but I really like it a lot. Um, as far as, like, game mode, I think my favorite one's, like, the bounty one, but, like, I hate it because it's really stressful at the same time because I'm like, oh, I have all this, like, money. I have to deposit it. Oh, my God. It's, like, you get, like anxiety about that. So hard point then, I suppose. If it's Yeah, I don't mind, attri I don't mind attrition. I think attrition, then hard point, and uh, then bounty mode. It's just bounty mode. I think is really it's a smart idea, huh. but it's just fucking. It's all I over like the it. place, dude. It's all over the place. You just suck at it, and I beat you like every time we played it, and that's why you don't like it. Hey, we're on the same team, dude. So I wouldn't get all fucking crazy willy nilly. We're friends. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and then I was talking about it earlier too. They added like a ton of. Uh, different options for your character they got rid of burn cards but they added boosts so now you got boosts in there which replace the burn card and you just like build them up throughout the match which at first um i was talking to somebody and they're like well shit dude they got rid of the burn cards that's super lame and then i thought back I on it. it i'm like i would use a burn card here's the situation i would either die before it actually i was able to like use it so then it's gone you know you burned it when you die it's like you know it goes away or it was, it, it was always cool to drop a titan in though for those 
Titan that was, cool. that was yeah. the one that was the best. Like, all the other ones seemed, like, situational and hopeful. Like, you know, a Titan shield. Well, I'd have to make sure I had my Titan when I could use that. And how many times did you just sell a card or just get rid of the card? Like, it yeah. wasn't. So there they added... Me I've ever not used at all, yeah. So they added boosts, which replaced burn cards, but opened it up a little bit more. you can use multiple times, like... Throughout the match, like, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Based on what you choose. So amped is what you start with, like amped weapons, the OG. And then they added sentry turrets, dude. You can throw out these, like, mobile little, like, uh, bomb turrets. Like, they do, like, little spider drones. They just run around They're and, like, ticks. blow people. Called ticks. And then there's, like, yeah, sentry guns ticks. that last for a minute. They just, like, shoot and attack people. There's a bunch of other stuff that you can get, too, man. Like, random boosts, uh... There's, like, clones of you that you can make. Yeah, too. that's level 48, though, the Tristan. That's for the T-Wish. That's for the Wish Kick Club. Oh, I love, love the guns. Like, each gun feels so different. Like, you shoot a gun, and it, it feels like there's, like, a different recoil, and the vibration's different for each gun. Also, too, when you, like, melee people, you are hitting them now. You're not kicking them, unfortunately. Yeah. It feels, like, like, meaty. Like, it has, like, a nice, like, plop when you hit them. It's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, so you, you can, can tell where uh so you can like steal their gun from them and then like, shoot them in the face with your own gun and it's pretty cool. Is the, the were you were you talking about the Titan executions? No, the human executions, but there are Titan executions as well, which are pretty sweet. Any execution in particular? The one that I did that you fucking geeked out about, dude? Yeah, My Titan why don't you explain <laughs> it? <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Ah, uh, dude, <laughs> the new Titan executions are pretty sweet. Mine was like he knocks the guy on the ground, he jumps on them, rips the body out, and throws it in the air, and then uses his Titan gun to shoot it out of the air and just like bursts the dude's body. It was just fucking amazing. Some of the other ones is like getting stabbed, which is whatever. It always does make you feel bad though when you get executed. You're kind of yeah. just like, ah, damn uh, it! Like that motherfucker got me. I I suck. I'm no good. I'm terrible. Yeah, so we got to play a little bit. We'll be playing more this week. Um, we'll have it on our twitch.tv backslash AlexNav, so you can check that out. Speaking of, someone was on this past weekend playing a little bit on uh, Twitch, playing some King's Quest. And uh, if you guys tuned in, you got to hear a merry old song. And to see <laughs> what what else did they get a chance to see, the first episode or the first two episodes? Uh, first episode. Almost complete playthrough. Just stopped at the end when you had to do that stupid puzzle quest thing with the guy and the chessboard. That was just annoying. <sighs> this is a fun game. I like it. Yawn. Excuse me. I'm on the second story now, and it's fun. I really fucked myself over, so I have to restart the second story. Just lame. But yeah, good game. Very, very well voice acted. Pretty funny. Uh, I like a lot of the references to the first King Quest game that are in there. I mean, played the first King Quest game, I get the references, and if you haven't, it doesn't really matter. You just played the first one recently, though, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I played it ages ago, but I never beat it, because I was just, like, a wee babe. I didn't understand life, and I was like, this game is super hard. So it was before the internet was around that you could just, like, Google to figure out what to do. Um, But yeah. As far as, like, uh, story-style games, it's, like, in the Telltale kind of style, right? Or no, like what you got in like the Telltale Walking Dead games and stuff like that. And how does it like rate up to like that style, like those type of games? No, it's, I don't, I mean, I guess it's the same style, but it's different gameplay. It's more like you're doing more stuff, like you're pulling a wench to move a thing, to pull another wench. Like a lady? You're pulling ladies? (laughs) Pulling ladies around? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the cool ladies are out. Oh. <laughs> They're stupid. <laughs> but anyways, it's I feel like it's way more engaging, way more in- interactive than the the Telltale games. Like your like your choices like are actually choices. Like I can choose to kill a little goat creature in the second one. Why would you ever do that? Because I couldn't save it. I didn't know any better. <laughs> I realized that I killed it on Death accident. to the goat I was, creatures. I, it was, I felt really bad. It was cute. It had like a little unicorn horn on it. And like it was like had its tongue sticking out like. Ah. It was not <laughs> purpose. But if I had saved it, then one of my team members would have died. So I was like, mm, you're dead little goat. Sorry. Yeah, it seems like it's a really fun game. Like I haven't had a chance to. And it finally, episode five came out recently. So Amy's got her hands on all five episodes and has been playing through them on Twitch for you guys. 
if you missed it, uh, you missed a hell of a show. A lot of fun stuff <laughs> going on there. Amy uh, repeatedly losing to Whisper in horse races. And then he murders some frogs, right? No, he, said he catches the frog for me. Oh, yeah. What did he say about the frogs? Dude, there was something he said about the frogs. They're his people! Oh. They're called the what, flipping... Flipping dragons or something. Yeah, flipping Hopping dragons, dude. It's it's or something like that. They're, it was really cute. It made me laugh. As a, a kid, lot. Tristan, did you ever play the King's Quest games? I did not. No. Did you ever play any of those like uh, walk to this spot and type out a random fucking word type of games that were almost impossible? I don't think I ever did. No, not really oh, my dude. thing. Those in, like, in school we had those. We had, a, like, a haunted house one that you'd had to do, and it was on a floppy disk, and sometimes, like, in our computer labs, this is before, like, all the cool all the com cool computer technology, this is back on floppy disk drives, one of the computers would have the floppy disk in it, and it, like, wasn't intentional, it's just, like, somebody had it in there and was playing it on some break or whatever, and if you got it, like, you had a chance to, like, play that game on it, but you had to walk up and, it'd, like, you'd have to type in open door, and then the door would open. But then you'd okay. have to, like, it was and before was internet. House, right? I remember that. Yes. And you had, like, to find the key. And, like, dude, I totally remember that game. Yes. It was fucking hard. I think I played some sort of, like, something, some game about, like, dragons or something way back when where it was all text based, where you type one thing and you get, like, a result or something. I forget the name of it, but. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, yeah. On the, the DOS, like the green screen, like little footprints. And you had to answer the questions right to find out where Carmen San Diego was. Dude, there was oh, all sorts of. Man. We're so old. Dude, we are just aging this fucking show by about 15 years, but that's okay. Those are the dude. Those are games that people will probably never get to play anymore. Like now, look what they did. They took King's Quest from you typing things to you just watching a video play and just like kind of like interacting with it just a little bit, and like just selecting dialogue that they've already chosen. You don't even have to think anymore. You just kind of do whichever one you want, trial and error, and it's over. Before you had to figure. That was the other thing. I wonder, was there manuals in those damn floppy disk boxes that, like, told you Sometimes. some of the commands that you'd have to type? Because I felt like I was pulling shit out of my ass, dude. Like, grab rock, or grab rock, or pull window down, or do something weird, but... Um, Break into parents' house through window. Does that yeah. work? <sighs> do my homework. Punch my teacher. Nothing. It never worked for me. But uh, King's Quest, dude, Amy's continuing on Civilization VI. Um, she might get a little more into that this weekend as well. But Titanfall, dude, Titanfall 2 is what's going to be going down. Chicken is oh, dude, yeah, she started her own religion in this game called Chickenism. Surprised? Well, right? I don't think anyone's fucking surprised by Chickenism. But, um, dude, we did get a chance. To I dabbled in Pokemon Go a little bit this weekend, but I'm sure, <laughs> Tristan, you were standing in the corner of your house, jumping up and down on your bed trying to fight off a hundred dudes on, like, one of the gyms right next door to you, I'm assuming. I, I came up <laughs> on the gym over by me. <laughs> after reporting those guys, like, nothing happened. Like, they, And they took over, like, every single gym Bunch in, like, dicks. a 30-minute vicinity of my location. So I was like, whatever, I'm, I'm just not going to battle in the gyms, whatever, fine. <laughs> kind of sucks because you don't get those coins but the coins don't really buy you much anyway so yeah i mean the halloween event though as a whole was pretty cool and i hope mm -hmm. that neon take does more of these because it i mean look at the numbers it did it was very successful for bringing a lot of people back into the game that sat away for for a while and it brought a lot of money back into it even though they're still making pretty decent money every day shit they're probably making millions a day oh yeah they were um, but yeah, this, there's some, I mean, Pokemon Go as a whole, like, they need to do many things that actually make it long-lasting. They need to change a lot of things. It's pretty much dead. Yeah, I mean, the gym medals are Yon just dumb at this point. Like, they need to add something where you can, like, actually maybe connect with other people. Maybe if I could, like, connect with you somehow and battle you, even though I'm not in the same city as you, that would be cool. That's an um, interesting idea. Change the whole, like, attack system and or battle system, something. Um, but yeah, I caught a lot of... I was in San Diego for the weekend for a wedding, and I don't know if it was just the location I was in, but I caught a lot of Pokemon over the weekend. <laughs> and yeah, it was 
good times. Did you catch a lot of like the Gastlys and the fucking Mewtwo's yeah, and, and even Mewtwo's? There's no Mewtwo's out. Yeah. Shut Secrets. up, man. There's no Mewtwo's out. There's but... no Mewtwo's. <laughs> the uh, yeah, I, I, ca- I caught a lot of Cubones. In where I was, there were a lot of um, a lot of Ponytas, even though I've already caught a bunch of those here. Oh, that's what I, I was going to ask you, they're... dude. I when I booted up, like, because my areas are so scarce, anyways, that I travel through on a day to day basis. That the only shit I saw this Halloween was Gastlys, um, the Meowths, and uh, Drowsies everywhere, dude. That was it. So it's kind of neat to know that there was shit elsewhere. I got a Marowak and a Gengar because you're I've, a little. I got way too many Cubones and Marowaks. Way too many. <laughs> That's and, yeah, me too. I just ground them up into candy because they're worthless right. now. I mean, it was it was cool because I doubled the candy, which was nice. And then if I had something that I don't see a lot of, but I was close to evolving it, making my buddy because they get four times as much of candy or four times as less time for walking to get a candy for your buddy Pokemon. So yeah, it worked out. I finally got my Gear uh, evolving Magikarp into Giard- Giardos. You did um, it? Yeah. Yeah. Euro Eurodos. Whatever. It's and uh, dude, that's, that that's fucking incredible that that actually happened, dude. Congratulations. Oh, my pieces that. Of candy. Yeah. That's yeah. That's insane, dude. I started turning him into my buddy. I started walking him, dude. I got tired of it, though. Yeah. So I only had to walk, <laughs> walk a quarter mile, for, for a quarter kilometer, I should say, for each candy. So it added up pretty quickly. And then just finding them just in by the beach area that we were at, we had six candies there. So Did you just strap out. it to the dog and let him, like, run around the yard? <laughs> no. no. You should. <laughs> I don't know how well that would do, but you can always test it out. <laughs> yeah, you can. You, there's always hoping. So, yeah, the Halloween event, hopefully, um, the rumor is going forward that there's going to be a Thanksgiving one and that people are, are talking about that Thanksgiving event um, could possibly Turkeys. happen. Uh, they'll do it. that um, it'll be like Spiros and several other Pokemon similar to that in style. Um, I don't know. There's also like, so that's kind of a rumor. The guy who's who's coming out with this is the guy who predicted, well, not really predicted because he's a source, um, gave out information about the Halloween event that was coming out to a T before it happened. Um, he's also saying that they're gearing up to do a Thanksgiving one. But also people are saying that Ingress only did national holidays, ones that kind of did international events like Halloween, Christmas, and April Fool's as well. Um, so Thanksgiving wasn't included in that because it's not really internationally known. Well, not everyone, not every nation like Korea, I don't think, does Halloween. Well, is international. Really- I, no, I'm not saying everyone's involved in Halloween, but it's more widespread than Thanksgiving, which I do believe is just us. Yeah. So... I think they kind of just go for the broader ones that will impact more people because I'm sure, you know, people in Japan don't care about our Thanksgiving. Christmas, like, they could have seals, dugongs, and, like, water and ice Pokemon, Dudes gongs. Yeah. Yeah. Lapras everywhere. Ooh, I haven't caught one of those yet. They're beautiful. I got one out of an egg when I was in South Carolina. Shut your mouth. I don't know if it was because I was there or what the case was, but I got one. (laughs) Dude, I feel like you've played this game in every city, in every state in the, has, in the country I, already. I've got a couple from Switzerland, too. That, cause oh, you yeah, you did where, that. If you click on one of your Pokemon, you can see where you captured it and the dates. And, yeah, I've got a Vaporeon from Greenville, South Carolina. I've got something from Zermatt, Switzerland, and San Diego. So, yeah. Oh, I'm Tristan. More. I caught things everywhere. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> my, my Pokemon speak French. Ooh, <laughs> One of my friends, I think I mentioned this previously, but he travels for work and he was in France. So he wasn't really into Pokemon Go at all, but he was like, I'm going to get it just so I can catch a Mr. Mime since they're exclusive <laughs> to Europe. And he did. He got one. Oh, really? Like, mm-hmm. Nice, dude. Good catch I was on unimpressed because he only caught one. Plus, <laughs> he cheated and used one of those um, apps. The, the apps that shows you where they are early on. Oh, the game yeah. Those aren't going on well. any longer, are they? 
I yeah. thought they blocked them all, but I don't know. Yeah. Dude, there's something out there. I don't know. Hey, if a, if a guy can take down the, the PlayStation 4 servers, a guy can definitely come up with a fucking tool to look <laughs> at the map on Pokemon Go. That's what I like. And you've mentioned it before, but po Neontic just needs to add an actual tracker in the game. Yeah, like, that yes. would make the game a lot more. It would make yes. it would make fucking sense. First of like, all, I and mean, they kind of like sure they show you like what's nearby and everything, but get back into the swing of things of like actually looking for a specific Pokemon that you see instead of like it just as disappearing on you in five minutes so quickly and you don't know which direction it's in. And, yeah. yeah, you got no fucking clue. Style. But yeah, and they they're they, working on they that. They do one. a lot of things with it. But we'll see what they do. Yeah, dude. It's uh, going to be interesting coming up on the end of the year, seeing what the holidays bring. Um, there's also talk of a daily bonus kicking in in the next couple of weeks, a daily bonus update um, that has you on your first Pokemon catch of the day getting 500 XP and 600 Stardust. If you go on a seven-day catching spree, one a day, you get 2,000 XP and 2,400 Stardust. And then... Um, what else they got? Your first Poke, Poke Stop visit and 500 XP in the dust. And then uh, seven straight days of check ins will get 2,000 XP restarting at midnight um, each day. So, little tiny little bonuses. 500 XP in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot, but it's also just for playing the game. So, you're just getting an extra benefit from playing the game. So, on that, on that <laughs> aspect. Yeah, dude, not too bad. But, I mean, they got that shit in, de in development, the tracker thing that I talked about with the bushes and it showing up where it's located and kind of nearby. When can we just, like, skip Halloween, skip Thanksgiving, fuck Christmas, fuck all these little bonuses, can I, can a brother get a tracker? That's all I want. I don't care about any of the other shit, dude. That is it. And once that comes into play, I'll do it. How close are you on filling your Pokedex? I'm at 70 uh... still. 71, maybe. You gotta be. Like, you, you gotta. I'm right 92 out of 92. I'm right now at 118. 118 out of what? 150. 150. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a little under halfway. Tristan has See, visited now, now that the that entire country. Now over though. Like I don't really. I was getting. I was evolving so many and unlocking new Pokemon to my Pokedex, and I'm like. Now that the event's over, like, ah, oh, that's so much work, and I, know. <laughs> I don't really want to do it now. Dude, it's a lot of fucking work, man. But just think, well, this is only year one with Pokemon Go, dude. The next couple of years are going to bring us Generation 2, Generation 3. I don't even care yeah. about those, though. Oof, you will once they start popping up and everyone's talking about it. And Tristan's on the fucking block party showing off his Meowth and all some Bulby Daddies and stuff. We'll see how long this game can go, but, yeah. It, it'll, it's it's still making money, so... Yeah, this thing is going to generate money for a long time. This is what's keeping Nintendo up until the Switch comes out. So, <laughs> well, Nintendo not really make... this. Not really this, but, like, you know, it's just, like, you know, helping them keep their right. name alive, dude, while they're... Because if you think about they... it, dude, you know, we got Game of the Year stuff coming up in, you know, like, a month from now, Game of the Year. And I was going through and starting some lists and looking at Nintendo's releases for this year. And they haven't had shit, really, man. <laughs> Like, on the Wii U, there's been a handful of games that were exclusive to the Wii U, and it wasn't yeah. pretty. So, it's going to be an interesting year, and the Switch going forward next year is going to be phenomenal. I'm excited for that, dude. Only good things coming from that. Did we touch on all of the uh, Pokemon Go news? I thought I had something else in here. I think I nailed it all. I'm really good at that stuff, you know? Oh, one thing we did miss on the Titanfall talk while we were talking about it is all DLC will be free going forward for that like they did last i think they did that last time right if you own the game yeah. you got all the maps for free and stuff after a while but you could they i mean you could buy the dlc originally but then they made it free later oh yeah they made it free so going forward all their dlc is going to be free but i was talking about this earlier as well with the poor sales i mean what if they don't even finish the dlc you know ea is good at cutting cutting fucking business uh businesses down dude when they're not producing for them so We've seen them chop chop down a few trees. We'll see how that goes with those guys. Um, we also had a couple of announcements this week. We can get into the news. Monster Hunter XX Double Cross, the expansion was announced. I talked about it last week that Monster Hunter uh, was getting a its own treehouse event from Nintendo, and it wasn't anything to be too excited for. And I was correct. It's just an expansion on top of Monster Hunter X, or Monster Hunter Generations in America, um, it will be coming out March 18th, uh, 2017, in Japan. Bing, bing, bing. What does that mean, though? 
the Nintendo Switch releases in March of 2017. Mm -hmm. Could this also be a hint that Monster Hunter Generations will be on the Switch and the expansion as well? Nobody really fucking knows, and we ha probably won't know for a while, but it is interesting that they are both coming out around the same time. Um, so it just l leads me to get you guys all worked up and give you guys false hopes and false excitement. But, you know. Um, but on top that's of what that, you do. I know, that's, what all, that's all I do. I'm a hype man, dude. I just get you all fucking hyped up. You guys spend all your money, you buy all sorts of shit that you don't need, then you come back and yell at me for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm completely wrong. Um, but another thing we're going to get, talking about the Nintendo Switch, um, January 12th, 2017, if it doesn't leak by then, um, they will be giving us a proper full reveal of the Nintendo Switch on January 12th, where they'll show off all the features, they'll talk about all the features, they'll show off some gameplay of games that are actually going to be on the system, and not just videos of shit playing on the playing in the background. Like, why does it take so long for them to reveal it when it's dude, coming out just a couple months after that? I that's exactly what I'm thinking, dude. You guys are showing this off January 12th. Get us that means now. Yeah, mm -hmm. start showing, showing, Get showing those pre-orders in. Yeah, like I don't you know can... why they're not even making at release. They're making less units than the Wii U for that launch. I don't understand why they're going it smaller than the Wii U when the Wii U we know what happened there. Yeah, and you, like, you, the you only that? thing that I can think of goes back to what Jason said last week was that they produce enough units to make it scarce and that yeah. people get excited and they want to buy it. I just think but I don't more agree with that. For a console, like perhaps a game in question, like a new Zelda game, maybe. But for the console itself, like that's the big ticket item. Like that's your money. Like, And that hasn't happened in a while either. Like yeah. nowadays, like it's so readily made and. So, so cheaply made overseas and everything like there's so many units that they can throw out there sure production can have suffer in some regard but i mean how hard was it to get an xbox one or a ps4 pretty easy yeah in this gen of consoles but well that's too like it also speaks to people like i want this right now oh we can order that in for you you'll get it in a few days nah never mind like i'm guilty shit I'm guilty. Oh, I am too. I'm guilty too. Like, I mean, I work at Hot Topic and I help people every day. Like, I can get this in for you. It'll be here. Free shipping. It's yours. Pick it up. Eh. And then I do the same thing, though. I'm just like, I know all of the spiels. Like, I know I can get it in, like, five. And then it ships to my job. Like, I work there. So I'm not even going out of my way to pick it up. I'm just like, eh, I don't want it then. So I kind of have a feeling this might shoot them in the foot. Like, it's not going to create this cool hype machine. Like... If I go to a store and I'm like, dude, I want to buy this, and it's not there, I'll be like, well, shit, I wanted to spend a couple hundred bucks, but that's what I'll buy instead. I'm going to get these games, or I'm just going to go out to eat and buy a bunch of junk food. I mean, you know, like, something like that. So I kind of feel like if it is intended for what Jason was speaking of, like, last week, like, a hype purpose, I don't know if it's going to go over very well. Especially, like, after holiday. Dude. Like, in Maybe pre-holiday, like it would be one of those. What was that, like Turbo Man style thing with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I need the Turbo Man. Like, yeah, I could kind of see that happening. It's but... Turbo Time. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe I went like so long without seeing that movie until last year. It was the first time I saw that movie. I was dumbfounded. You'd never seen that. I was like, what? what? That's <laughs> you've seen like Last Action Hero, and you've seen like all of his adventures in babysitting, but you've not seen that one. I was so confused. You've seen Jingle All the Way. And, like, the Santa Claus, but not that one. I was so, like, so confused. Sometimes, you know, holiday movies, they can be tricky to me, so I'm not sure which ones I should check out, which ones are, you know... If, if I see Jonathan Taylor Thomas on it, I know I should watch it. Sometimes if I see Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm not sure if it's a holiday flick I should check out. So, hmm. and you put Sinbad on there, and it's just, like... I might be wasting and my it was time. Great. Yeah, it was absolutely fucking amazing. If you haven't seen it, you need to check it out so you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, well, <laughs> oh yeah, Phil Hartman is in it. He's good too. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah, but so on the on the Switch, Amy, totally agree. Um, and what could could we possibly be looking at? What happened with No Man's Sky? Where was so little known about this game that people went into it and they were just irritated by it, and it wasn't what anyone expected it to be. Is that There's what's going to happen with the I Switch? Is that, you know, we're not going to know too much about it. Everyone's going to get their hands on it. And they're like, well, this doesn't do anything that I want it to do. It doesn't play any of the good games. And it's not as great as... And you know how long that battery is going to last. That is the big one. People are hinting at, like, 8 to 12 hours. That's fine, but I mean... Okay. 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but that's that's. I think that's high, dude. Still being holster I, quite a bit for charging. But. Yeah, I think eight to twelve is way too high on that, dude. I mean, like high. look at your 3DS and your Vitas and the length of those guys, and I would probably take it off like a couple hours off of that just for the power. I mean, this is double or triple the RAM that you were, they're supposedly saying it's at four megabytes of, or four gigabytes of RAM, and you're looking at like five, 12 megabytes and maybe a gig for the Vita and the 3DS. So this is, you know, it's, and obviously the play, PS4s and Xbox Ones are sitting on like 8 gigs of RAM, so, you know, Nintendo still isn't anywhere near where all the competitors are, but, I mean, that's... Like, well, that's why they can play a 10-year-old Skyrim game on it. No shit, dude. It's the only thing that could play on that bad boy, dude. So, uh, we'll keep you guys up to date on what's going on with the Nintendo Switch and anything else reveals. Currently known is that it's around 4 gigs of memory, and January 12th, everything else is going to be coming out, um... So we'll just keep going off that, dude, and see what kind of launch. They're going to show the launch games. So they'll show, you know, all the specs for it, the pricing, combo packs, all sorts of fucking great shit. I'm assuming that's going to be in line that a week later that demo kiosks are going to be in the stores because they talked about January for demo kiosks, and you can't have them before the debut of it. So they're looking at the end of January to get in your hands on one and actually touching one since, since they fucked us at E3, like snobby little pricks, and didn't let us get a touch it. But that's all right. That's just me being cranky um let's talk about something that's near and dear to tristan's heart tonight and i want to thank tristan for joining us and not uh staying away and watching this uh world series uh that's going on right now the mlb world series is going on right now (laughs) i don't know the score going on but you guys all know tristan loves baseball and for him to step away from the world series and join us is amazing and he's doing it so he can talk about mlb the show 17's cover star ken griffey jr (laughs) they're really Going, uh, taking all the stops to get Griffey on the cover, which is <laughs> is that a lot strange, of stops to get Griffey? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not, he's not doing much now, but it's kind of odd for them to bring someone like that in when, like, they don't make usually make a huge deal of who's on the cover, not like Madden or anything. But I guess it's it's, I mean, it's cool. I love growing up playing King Griffey Junior. Baseball on the Super NES, Dude, and I know I when I saw King Griffey. Played a lot of that game. I don't play a lot of sports games, and I played the shit out of Ken Griffey, dude. Mostly because it was like, like I like quirky and weird, you know, big bulky dudes and all sorts of goofiness, man. So I saw Ken but Griffey's yeah, I mean, name. If Ooh. anyone's ever played that game, like Jason has, and you know all about it. So yeah, I, I played plenty of it. So some nostalgia there for someone that already doesn't play on the show, but like, hey, I should pick up the new one because it's got King Griffey on the cover. Makes sense. I, don't know <laughs> I, I get it. Aren't we so easy? I We're get it. <laughs> but my but question yeah, it'll, is... It'll be cool, though. We'll see what they do in the game. Like, playing as King Griffey Jr. and, like, the Home Run Derby will be pretty awesome if they can do that. Oh, is that... So I was going to ask you, is, is that the gimmick? Because usually when they do, like, an old-school person, like, NBA's done Michael Jordan, but then it has, like, a mode with Michael Jordan. The WWE games do, a, like, old wrestlers. Then it has a mode with the wrestler. N- now that MLB's doing Ken Griffey, is there going to be some sort of, like, storyline mode? Or, like you said, is it going to... You think it's going to be, like, a home run derby starring Ken Griffey, and he's, like... They're going to throw Griffey as one of the playable legends in the game. Okay. Um, which isn't a totally new thing. It, they've done it for the last couple of years. Going back to 2015, they introduced it then. Um, so, yeah, they, they, I think they had like 60 old players in the game last year. So, yeah, they got another one in the game. And it's King Griffey. So, that's one way to sell it, sell the game if you want to play as King Griffey. Dude, ne- next year it's going to be Paul Molitor, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Or no, no. Who was who was the other Brewers guy I was thinking of? Robin Young. Yes, dude. <laughs> it's gonna be, <laughs> Amy. You're not amused, but if you know baseball and old Brewers shit, I don't dude, know. it's. I am just like whatever. Like, it's cool funny, guys. dude. Like... He's, he's got his own lemonade. I'm not really into like these super deluxe edition games that they throw out there. Yeah. Or Hall of Fame edition. There's like a GameStop exclusive where you actually get a hat with the game and. Uh, otherwise, you're getting all these different packs that I never use in the game. But if you're into it and you play that mode, then I guess that's cool. I think I'll just probably just pick up the standard ed- edition, though. Yeah, what is in the Hall of Fame edition? A hat? A sponsor pack? <laughs> a bunch of, like, in-game packs, huh? 
Yeah, it's it's wow. all packs. It's all like it's, it's all almost play. like an ad like you're paying to be advertised to about this monetary system that's inside their game. It's like almost like you're paying a hundred dollars to get a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna suck your ass in to spending more fucking money on microtransactions. That's hilarious, yeah. dude. It's like Pretty over a two hundred dollar value, but you're like <laughs> not really. It's way too expensive for all this stuff. For a hat? Hell yeah, dude. Get a bunch of stubs and avatars, but whatever. That's <laughs> crazy, dude. You do get thirty one MLB PS4 themes though. So, depending on your flavor of the that? month, dude, you can switch your uh, PS4 out to look like your favorite, your new favorite team. Yeah, dude, I was blown away by Ken Griffey Jr. 20 years since he's been in a game. Holy crap. Dude. I mean, I love this franchise, so I'll pick it up. They don't have to even throw Ken Griffey Jr. on the cover to sell it, sell it to me, but I'll pick it up. Dude. See what they do in the new year. MLB 16 came out in March of last year? Yeah, it usually comes out right before the season starts in April. Oh, dude, I can't believe it's a whole year because I was like literally expecting you to tell me about MLB again this week, and I feel like it never gets like it's not that. I feel like it just. I don't know why, dude. Maybe I'm just going crazy. I feel Sports like sports games just came have out. such a have a small uh, shelf life where once the season's over, it's like yeah, you can play in the off season, but then the new game's going to come out before the new season. Go starts, burn your so. disc in the barrel, dude. Throw it in the fire. <laughs> Keep warm this winter. And, yeah, the sports games pretty much end up being... Like, if you're trading that into, like, Best Buy or Amazon or anything like that, or you can do GameStop, I guess. But it's, like, they give you, like, 25 cents sometimes for some of these sports games. Yeah. Like, why even trade it? I'll, I'll just keep it on my shelf. Click dust. That's Dude, fine. <laughs> have you ever bought an old sports game? I always thought it was funny. Like, in, like, it's, you know, 2016. I, when I <laughs> I'll see it 2008. In... And I'm like, who the fuck's buying that? Well, I've bought <laughs> the old Ken Griffey Jr. baseball and Super NES when I was out in New York last week at, or last year visiting Jason and from uh, what whatever that vintage video game place is called. I forget the name of it, but they've all every imaginable old Super NES, Nintendo video game that you can imagine. I picked that up for a few bucks since I lost my copy throughout the years. Too surprising. I love that. Dude, they should go back down that road. They've tried with those, like, super mega baseball games. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same, man. It's just right. not the same, dude. So that is coming out March 28, 2017. MLB The Show. Ken Griffey Jr. Um, if any new modes or uh, things are added to it that kind of, like, hint to more uh, Ken Griffey, we'll let you guys know. Tristan will be all over it. He's going to continue his season, and uh, he's going to stick with us. He's not going to jo join the game. I have a feeling the Cubs are losing. I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but... They're fortunately winning, but who's counting? No. <laughs> Not me. But, uh, Amy, one of your favorite games from last year, or this year, I know you got it around Christmas time, so you probably played it at the beginning of this year, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider is getting a sequel. And it was leaked on a subway train because one of the developers of the game was looking at some notes on his laptop on the subway train. And you wouldn't think, though, to be honest, that, you know, if you're on a subway train and you're looking at something, I'm going to say that I would probably say nine times out of ten, the dude standing behind me probably wouldn't have any clue of what I'm doing or what I'm looking at. But it just so happened that some dude who has a Reddit account, who's a big gamer, was standing right behind him when he opened it up. And he happened to see that it said the new title for the new Tomb Raider game that isn't even announced yet, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, is being worked on. And it had some like little like blurbs about what they're doing in it and like kind of some other stuff. But it had the logo on there. And some guy was able to snap a shot of that. What are the odds, though, that that happens so quickly? And the guy was just like, yeah, I couldn't really read it. I was in a hurry, but I saw it and I took a picture of it. And it's absolutely legit. They haven't come out to acknowledge it yet. But... Dude, it just cracked me up that, like, that guy got caught, dude. Just a little slip-up. This happened once before with something else as well, where someone opened up their uh, their laptop and let something leak. But mm. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, do you think that title kind of goes in line with what we've been seeing through the... What was the Rise of the Tomb Raider? And what was the first one? Legend of the Tomb Raider? Or just the uh, Tomb Raider? I think it was just Tomb Raider. Yeah, so... I think so. Shit, dude, expect it. I'm assuming that... Name. 
Yeah, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Xbox exclusive through holiday. I'm, I'm calling it right now. I'm sure we'll see more at E3 coming up in 2017. But yeah, nothing yet now, but I thought it was uh, interesting news for you guys if you didn't check it out, dude, that there is another Tomb Raider coming out. And those games are fucking gorgeous, so I can only imagine, you know, with the PS4 Pro and the Scorpio coming out, that it's going to look amazing. And then we'll get the last-gen system on the Nintendo Switch. I'm sure they'll have a version on there as well, so... Maybe, maybe not, dude. Who knows what the hell's coming to the Switch. Oh, speaking of PS4 Pro as well, dude, before we start getting out of here, I'm rambling on. Um, updates have been coming to the PS PlayStation 4 for HDR and 4K support um, through games. Like, uh, if you have, I think Tomb Raider was one of them that was updated. Uh, shit, dude, I just forgot it. Anyways, there's a couple of games getting patches right now that you can check out and play. Lost Sun, dude. What the hell is that game? Yeah, well... I'll remember it next week for you guys and tell you all about it. Um, two more things real quick, dude. Amazon is launching its Countdown to Black Friday sales are going on right now. And, dude, they had an insane deal that I just missed. But it's crazy that Black Friday sales are already starting. They discounted it 70 or 87% off of uh, Rainbow Six Siege. They discounted it down to $5, really? dude. Wow, you should have got in there. I know. I, I was like, I clicked on it, and it said right when I found this article to tell you guys about it. So make sure you guys check out Amazon.com. We don't get paid to say this, but I want you guys to get the best deals and play them as much as you can. I just want to be out front, dude. I don't, Amazon doesn't do shit for me. If they want to, they can. I'll take it. But uh, <laughs> they do. They got the Countdown of Black Friday sales going on, so you should definitely check it out if you're looking to pick up some games for yourself or gifts for the holidays. Um, we just picked up a bunch of stuff for gifts. I picked up uh, – ooh, can't talk about it. Some people might be listening. Well, we picked up some uh -huh. stuff, dude. Uh, yeah, some gifts for some sales going on. So we'll be playing them. Amy bought Titanfall 2. I'll be playing that this weekend. UFC is going on this weekend. And something crazy called Game Hole Con is going on in Madison, Wisconsin this weekend. It is the biggest Midwest tabletop gaming convention. No way. Yeah, dude. And it's been going on for several years in Madison. No fucking clue. Right under the radar, dude. So I might be checking oh, that out. Bigger. Yeah, dude. It's going to be huge, man. One year it's going to be the biggest one in the United States of America. People have come from international places to check it out. Um, Amy, what do you got going on this weekend? I'm um, playing Civ 6, Timefall 2. Chickenism, um, taking over the world. Chickenism. I'm going to try to do a religious based win. Um. I don't know, and probably play some more King's Quest. Yeah. Dude, um, I was going to ask you before we get going, because I'm blabbermouth, dude. Is What's the hardest thing to win in Civ Six? Is it religion? I don't know. Huh, okay. I wasn't sure. Because I know, like, winning with wars is probably the easiest. Like, yeah. beating the shit out of dudes, so. Chickenism is going to be the toughest thing that Amy will face in 2016. Tristan, what do you got going on this weekend, bro? I'll be checking out Titanfall 2. See how that is? Check out that campaign that I'm hearing. Oh, such you got about. it on Xbox One, didn't you? I did, yeah. Amy fails. So well, I got through. Well, she didn't fail. She explained her situation. I know. Come on, man. All right. Come on. Just I, I just got mine through Gamefly, so it, I didn't totally invest in it too much yet. Yeah, I gotcha, dude. Yeah, that's going to be awesome, man. Let us know what you think, dude. I look forward to hearing it this next week, dude. Make sure you guys check yeah, us out next week, we'll Wednesday. Out. Um, oh my gosh, and uh, what else you got going on? You got another big thing you're going to be watching this weekend. Uh, Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, Doctor Strange. Yeah, it's coming out. Me and Amy got to check that out, dude. I totally forgot about that. We got to fit that in this weekend in between taking, signing people up for chickenism. We'll have to check out Doctor Strange to see what's going on with that. Yeah. Um, I can expect your full review on uh, next week Wednesday on Adapted. See you there for episode 101. Episode 101 next week, Wednesday, 7 o'clock Central, adapt on alatonav.com. If you guys missed it, check out youtube.com backslash live or twitch.tv backslash alatonav. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week. I'm Chad. That's Chicken Amy. Jason was a chicken this week. He won't be next <laughs> week. And that's Tristan. Jason's sleeping behind me right now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, and we will see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.